welcome to the Make Us Notebook podcast number 65. I am Tracy and I'm Stacy and we our little corner of YouTube podcast is about knitting, crocheting, all things crafty. We would like to branch out, we always say this, but we don't have the time, <laughs> like we want to, because um, right now I'm experiencing castanitis. Yeah. I'll explain for the <laughs> Yeah. And we do memory keeping. Actually, we do do it. It's just that to think about strategizing and recording our process, like we just don't have the time yet yeah. to delve into that. Yeah. Because knitting. Yeah. But by the time we have time, the kids will be all grown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're coming to you from outside of Charlotte, yeah. North Carolina. On a hot. It's balmy, very hot. miserable hot. Yeah, so that's why you just don't see us wearing any knitwear, uh, mo which highlights we have a need for knitwear that, well, sleeveless tops that are more front. I shouldn't say sleeveless because you don't like sleeveless. Yeah. <laughs> but summer weight friendly, summer yarn friendly, yep. you know, garments that yeah. we can wear in the heat. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. It's been a minute since we last podcast. Um, I think you had put out one uh, not too long ago, but uh, we've been traveling and now we're back, settling back into a routine because school is about to start soon. And I can't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> because it's too hot. But uh, yeah. So, just trying to get back into the swing of things and uh, we'll be back to our normal podcast podcasting schedule. Yeah. So. So th Tracy went on vacation, so you heard about my vacation, so Tracy, you can talk about her vacation. Oh uh, yeah, we went to, I we took our daughters to Nashville because my oldest loves country music and we also did a college tour at Vanderbilt and uh, we took them down on Broadway to listen to some honky tonk music, which is basically live music. Because during the day, kids are allowed in, and after a certain time, they're not. So uh, that was a cool, that was cool. And uh, we toured the Grand Ole Opry, which was pretty cool too. And then uh, we left from there, we went to, we have an RV, so we went from Nashville, drove 10 hours to Michigan, and we stayed outside Grand Rapids, and we explored Grand Haven, South Haven those areas and that was fun and i went to jean stouffer's store uh, if you guys know who that is she's a designer um she's on um on magnolia network as yeah. the established home oh. she's she's our favorite one of our favorite designers and she has her own store Rapids? Grand Rapids. yeah and uh two years ago i went to her store and it was closed on the day i went and i was leaving that town, leaving that area that day. So I missed it. So we went back again. This time we checked the hours. We almost didn't make it into the store because uh, there was a bad storm that night and it knocked out power on the whole street. So, but she had her store open and it was kind of dark in there, but I was able to get some stuff. The register wasn't even working. I had to, the person checking me out had to do it on her phone. It was crazy. But uh, I was in there having a blast. I had a shopping list for Tracy. She did. <laughs> I was um, like, oh my God. We had to get the Bradbury candle. Had to. Yes. So, uh, so much to see, so much to get lost in. Just, I love the style. And um, it's very, um, for you interior design enthusiasts, uh, I like to watch and observe her designs because it's very classic. Like it's timeless. It's timeless yes. and it's um very like uh British inspired and it's clean. Yeah. Homey, yeah, cozy, clean, but yet sophisticated. Yeah, it's not modern or anything like modern in the sense of like contemporary, but it's just basically you I'm, this is a good example. You can look at a room she designed 10, 15 years ago, and you would think that it was today. Yes. That's good design yes. in my book. Timeless. Timeless. Yeah. 
if you can go into a house and it be like, wow, it speak, you know, it's still relevant today. Hey, yes, that's pre- that's pretty good. Yes, the whole lot. Yes, <laughs> and uh, the lady checking us out. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, but um. And there was a coffee shop, right? There was a coffee shop. She has attached. a coffee shop yeah. that her son. I don't know if you guys watched it, her, the established home, but one of her sons opened, started that coffee shop. And yeah. They moved away, I guess. I think they went uh, near Ann Arbor, I believe. I don't, don't quote me on that. Yeah, they moved away. But uh, someone else was running the coffee bar, and at first I didn't realize that it was a blackout. So I'm not, and I didn't understand because the doors were open uh, to the coffee bar. So. I just assumed it was open, and I couldn't understand why the store was dark. It didn't dawn on me that it was a blackout. Yeah. And so I put two and two together halfway through. It's like, street looked like yeah. a lot of these stores should be open. Why aren't they open? Yeah. It's coffee bars. It's restaurants. They're all closed. Yeah. It's weird. But anyway, uh, I spent a good amount of time in there trying to make decisions <laughs> Yeah. yeah. for myself. And uh, my husband was so patient because he knew I wanted to come back so bad. Yeah. So uh, he just sat there and waited for me. My one of my daughters was following me all over the store, and it's like, please, I need some space. Please, I need to think. I think need exactly. To think. So Tracy was to send me a picture of her inside the store. Now, of course, I was very jealous, and I was like, all well, the first thing I noticed, and I'll flash the picture here, is the chair that was in the background. Yes, <laughs> the set is a settee, lovesy yes. sort of thing, but it's like. Um, uh, covered, fabric mm-hmm. covered, slip covered. I was like, I need that chair in my like in my office. Like I imagine, yes. like I could paint my office this dark green yes. because Jen Stouffer really brought in the green mm-hmm. craze back, mm-hmm. and this warm green, and then you have like the nice light, and, the and light then colors. this set. The light colors of the furniture to lift the room up to make it lighter and not too yes, heavy. Yes, yes, beautiful. Yes, I asked. Um, so the, the chair is not a bad price either. It wasn't. Yeah. She has yeah. she has different price levels all in there. Some pillows yeah. were like fifty bucks. Some pillows were even higher. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just really nice. Yeah. And uh, this one lady, uh, the one who's checking me out, she worked there, but her daughter-in-law. Volunteer, she said. She said, I, I would volunteer. That's what I said. I would. I said, uh, Yeah, I don't blame you for volunteering. But anyway, I said, Do you get a lot? Of I imagine. That keeps you busy. Because, yeah, they're on the Magnolia Network. So ah. they, they, nation all over the world, probably get. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful store. It's not as big as I thought it would be, but it's a nice. It's her, very nice. her cabinet, cabinetry line is designed for if you watch if you follow chris loves julia on instagram her kitchen is jen stover mm-hmm. cabinets and it is chef's kiss it's the quality is just stunning yeah I, just, I like the fact that she takes your mind off of not it's not only white cabinets yeah. right she has all different kinds of colored cabinets yeah i'm not crazy colors Mind you, right? Yeah. Nice grays, different yeah. shades of grays, yeah. taupe greens, yeah. so forth. Expand, expand your mind in what kitchen cabinetry yeah. should could look like. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's it's quality when yes. you, when Chris loves Julia. Julia, she opens. I'm like wow. Stunning. I'm like Stunning. that is some next level cabinet. Stunning. <laughs> Anybody yeah. that gets Jen Stouffer's cabinets, they're luck- lucky. Lucky. Super lucky. Lucky. It's like yeah. amazing. But anyway, so let's talk about some of the yarn shops. Yes. You went so through. one of my things I wanted to do, I like to visit yarn shops in every area. I mentioned this before. And we were in um, Holland, and I went to the farmer's market. And, and this is in Michigan, right? Michigan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I picked up some yarn at this one farm stand at the Holland farm market. farm stand? Oh, that's super cool. Isn't it cute? And who is who is the name of the uh, It's just a lady who locally hand dyed. Um, oh, yeah, local hand dyed. Yeah. So she has a farm. And I'm trying to read this like I can see this without mm-hmm. my glasses. Um, it's called Sandy Side Farm. Shady Side Farm. Right? Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, she sold vegetables and, and honey and stuff like that. And uh, she had yarn. So I said, yes, I have to buy yarn. You know, my, uh, as soon as I saw it, my eye went straight to it and I walked straight over there. 
DK weight. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's 562 euros. Oh, not bad. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty substantial for a. It's uh 85 percent wool, 15 percent nylon. Yep, wool from her farm, fresh from our farm to you. Yeah. Um, I'll put the link on the bottom. It's shadysidefarm.com. Yep. So I'll put the link. Very nice. So we went there and then um so while we were in Holland I looked up this one yarn shop and um Stacy will put the footage there. It's um okay, so the, the yarn shop in Holland, Michigan is the Garing Hoot House Yarn Studio. And that is a very cute yarn shop. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of options. Yeah. Uh different price points, local dyes, uh Common brands that you will look, you'll see, such as Barocco, and um, she even had uh, what's that yarn that uh, I can't remember the name. Anyway, I'll have Stacy flash the names here, but she had so many different options. I had a hard time, yeah, trying to. Decide. Um, but uh, when I that day on a Saturday, they they closed at two. So okay. Stacy wanted me to pick up a particular yarn for her. So I had already left the yarn shop. So when you stop, when I got your text message, I said, "Oh, okay, I'll just run back over there and get it." And as soon as I got a text message, I started heading making my way back to the yarn shop, and they were closed. Did you get anything from there? I did. I got some. I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> I'm just I, so I, prepared. I can, I? I can just. Okay. So I, I picked up this one particular yarn because I'm making a sweater for my daughter because, you know, she hijacked my my yarn shopping and said, you know, you promised me this sweater and you have yet to get the yarn. So, you know, you should be buying me this yarn for my sweater. <laughs> so that's how she hijacked me. And uh, I, I had no choice but to buy it because I've been promising her this sweater for months. And it's the Light Loop Sweater. By who is it? Are the loops, and I, I'll have Stacy flash a picture of it right here. But so I picked up the yarn; it was yeah. perfect for it. But okay. uh, very friendly staff. Uh, one lady was working, but she was so nice. Um, so I went there, and then uh, the next yarn shop I went to after there was in Cedar, Michigan, and uh, I'll flash the information here. Uh, that was a cute yarn shop too. Went there before two years ago, and uh, I picked up some yarn for Stacy from. She was having a trunk show. Mm -hmm. She was having a trunk show, and uh, I wanted something that was different because she had the the other yarns that we've seen before, and nothing wrong with them. Uh, she even had that yarn dyed. Colorado. What can I think of the names today? Hugh Loco? Yes. She had Hugh Loco. But this one I've never heard of, so I figured, and she was featuring this one. Yeah, so I this one is called Murky Depth, and this is a deep sock. Yeah. So. Color is stunning. <laughs> the color is for Beatrix. Yes. <laughs> it's stunning. So uh, that was um, a very nice shop. Then after that, we went to um, Fiber Shed, which is in Boyne City, Michigan. That one really impressed me because uh, she don't feature the common yarns we see. She features yarns from either local dyers mm -hmm. or uh, local farmers who spin their own yarn from the sheep on their farm. Okay. So I got I got uh, this yarn, and I also got Casey this one. I got one for myself too. Uh, this is from her sheep on her farm. Her sheep name is Sadie. So she got that one. And it's a worsted weight yarn. And uh, I got one. For, I picked it up one for me, one for Sissy. And then you got. <laughs> then I got this one. And uh, it's a worsted weight as well. And I want to make a hat with it. So uh, again, this is someone who's in the area who spun her own yarn and dyed it. So I was so impressed with the concept of the shop. 
Yeah. And uh, very friendly, uh, very nicely laid out. Um, she said, I don't sell your typical yarn, so you can't come look in. She said, I do have a lot of needles that, you know, people so look for. So the question I have, because she doesn't sell like a range of yarns, like say that's out there, like yeah. Barocco and all mm -hmm. of those guys, and then, you know, hand, hand dyers. Um, the yarn she does carry, is there a range of prices that's like, uh, did you notice that? Yes or no. So like the yarn that she sold, that's in the typical range for that weight yarn. Yeah. So they're all in the typical range. Yeah. They're not astronomical. But if somebody, yeah, if somebody can't afford, like. She, do, she, so I did see she has mini skeins and uh, so something like this which is um, half of a skein, like... Three grams? Right. Which, like, parts on fiber will sell stubbies. Uh -huh. I consider it, like, a stubby-like. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that one was... So this is 15. Um, 50 grams, 123 yards. Okay. DK. DK weight. And that was uh, $12, right? So I think she tries to be mindful of that. Um, but it gets so cold there. So they like the thick, heavy stuff. Yeah. So I think they're used to that price point, I, I, I'm guessing, because she said she's only been there six, six seven months. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, I said, oh, when I came two years ago, I didn't notice. She said, that's because I wasn't open yet. Yeah. So she said, um, so she has midnight on Friday nights, and she must be doing very well. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned to her that we have a podcast yeah. and that we'll talk about her yarn shop and she was so excited she goes i would love to be featured <laughs> very sweet um but she has a beautiful yarn shop and based on the footage of the scene that uh, we're showing here you can see and she even had sold plants in there not a lot plants. of plants yeah she had this one monstera small but it was just like small like the one that you have yeah very nice so it's like oh my gosh lady get me out of here <laughs> So, and uh, I think that was it for yarn shops. I didn't go to a lot of the others because we weren't going in that direction. Um, but, uh, you know, I must say, we were in Shalavoy, Michigan, which is uh, uh, along the coast there. And there's this one, we ran into this one dental practice and it's a storefront. She had like health, health food, Supplements and um, toothpaste and all natural products in the front. That's super cool. The concept was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I, was, I was just like so impressed with it. Just it gives you an idea? Yeah. <laughs> it gives you an idea and it's just like, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. It's so probiotics, vitamins, everything that you could think of on the natural side. Nice. And I was just very impressed with that. But the whole town I was very impressed with. Very cute area. Um, I always, I didn't see, there was a yarn shop there in Shalavoy, but I couldn't get to it because I was being lazy. I didn't want to walk, I was walking all day and I didn't want to walk an extra, um, 15 minutes. <laughs> I know. After a while, you're like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> and it, it don't get hot there, but that day it was kind of hot. Uh, I'm yeah. done. So we get, yeah. But uh, my trip was wonderful, and I'm happy to be back. Happy to be back in my space. <laughs> because when you live in an RV home, it's tight. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, I, as I promised so on the last podcast, that I will show the yarn I, um, we got from Japan. And I'll insert a video of mine, because I forgot to bring mine. But here, Tracy has hers and okay, that is it. i'm sorry if it's yeah that's fingering weight yarn oh my gosh the color is beautiful it's scrumptious and this shop also like the one shop tracy mentioned that just sell local she just sells her brand oh. of yarn so oh, nice Brilliant. yeah i got castanitis i know any ideas what you're gonna make with that no i have to look up i have uh i have to look and see because what's the content on it it it's kind of around what you said so it must be
Is it fingering? I thought it was. It's size two, so that is yeah. a fingering weight, right? Yeah. So size one is lace weight. Yeah. And this color is soup. Again, the store is Amina Am Amimono Spin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, I'll have to look it up and see what the content is and insert it here into the okay. Yeah, I gotta see what I can make with this because uh, I have castanitis. This is one sweater I want to make, but I, I don't think it calls for fingering weight. Mm -hmm. I've made it before. It's, it's the one I used the Queen City yarn mm -hmm. to make the... Um, the thing about that, you could hold lace with it. Um, it not mohair because we're not mohair i'm not a mohair girl I'm let's sorry. face it i have two tops of mohair and i don't want to wear it right it's just never hot enough i don't like mohair. i mean cold you know it's never cold enough i'm not a big, a big mohair fan i think if i was up somewhere where it's called like michigan or new york somewhere yeah. then i'd be more apt to wear it yeah that's, that's not for me uh, but i want to make the outline raglan but that calls for i want to say a dk weight so i don't think I'll, I'll figure out something. Yeah, you'll have to you roll another fingering with it. You know I will. I'll figure okay. out something. So. Cool. Okay. So, guys, let's jump into first object. Do you have any? I do. I'm so excited. I finally finished. That looks so good. The Grammy Medley Sweater. Very nice. It turned out nice. Tracy it, finished before I even could start. <laughs> I wanted to like de-stash some stuff. Pretty so good. it was a perfect chance to work on it. And uh I this was a fun this was a fun knit. Um I tried it on and at first I thought it would be too small, but I figured by the time I blocked out I'll gain a couple extra maybe an inch or two or so if so. But it fits perfect. Yeah, it fits great. Um, it matches your top. It does. I see myself wearing it with some jeans. Yeah. But I love it. Uh, so much so that it inspired my daughter. She's like, I want to make a sweater now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she totally can. Yeah, well, she's learned, she's practicing. She's making hats. She's making a scarf for a friend for Christmas. And she's working on a hat, too. Yeah. So she says, you think I'll be ready? And I'm like, I think you will be if you put your mind to it. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know when she'll have the time, so. But anyway, I finished it, and um, I know you guys, I've talked about this so much, but I'm just going to, you know, for those of you who are new here, uh, I'm just going to quickly run through the details. And um, this is by Tina Say, mm -hmm. and um, I used Chelsea Lux 801010 Magpie Fibers and Mad Tosh, Madeline Tosh. Um, I used the size 7 needle for the body and the size 5 for the ribbon at the neckline and cuffs and um, I made a size two um, I didn't make any modifications this was a bottom-up knit and um, it's knit in I'm reading my notes because I will forget as well it's knit in the round until you separate the front and back then it's knit flat from there on and then um, you connect the shoulders so it's a v-neck style I like v-necks yeah I didn't think I would but I do uh, so it's a bunch of Stocking it, slip stitches, and striping. So it creates this patchwork like without creating seams. So I absolutely loved how it turned out. Um, in her. Um, what kind of stitches? Like there's some striping, yeah. there's some slip stitches. Slip stitches. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, it? Stocking it. And then. So, so it's like patchwork, right? So it's the slip stitch right here. Stripe in and then stock in it. Just regular plain. Yeah. Color. Yeah. Nice. So, um, her her uh, colors that she chose the designer. It was really intriguing, but I didn't have anything in stash that did look intriguing. So this is the best I can come up with. Because I good. wanted to use what I had in stash, and I think I made it work. Yeah, you did. So part of me wished I had done a cream in here, but I wanted to use what I had. Yeah. So, if you want to de-stash, this is the ideal way to yeah. do it. Because you use what? Um, fingering weight. Three different colors. Yes. Yeah. I think one of the colors you need two skeins, right? Correct. So, yeah, for the most part, depending on what size you're making. But uh, it's um, yeah, 
You need two skeins of one color and then um or skein and a half, depending on the size you're making. And then um is spring run weight yarn, I think I mentioned that today. It's not sorry for the repetition here. And uh yeah. You need some if you if you're good with color work or you're picking choosing your colors, this should be a piece of cake for you. Yeah. Unlike to me, I struggle with that. Yeah. Color theory class. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm finally finished with it and I'm excited. Nice. What do we have here? So, this is the Ayana shawl that I tested it for Tammy Gore. Oh. And. It feels amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, it's one of those asymmetrical <laughs> shawls, which. It's nice and long. Yes, it's long. So you, it calls for, um, let me see, one, it calls for three colors, and then the fourth color is like a, a little bit you just need. But it has like, um, you start from this end, of course, as we know, like these sort of asymmetrical things, and you work your way all the way down here, and then you do this edging. Uh, there is a bunch of, um, there's brioche. There's one color brioche, two color brioche. There's just plain, um, what do you call it? Just plain knitting. Mm -hmm. But then there's striping and slip stitches and brioche. So the slip stitches are here, stripes, and then um, the brioche. <laughs> It's so hard to show you on this, but like the top of this, followed by a little lace detail, and then more brioche, single color, and then two color brioche down here. And then, yeah, she, um, I think with, I ended up doing an accent color here. The pattern didn't call for it, but I. It looks nice. It feels nice. It's a, a meditative pattern. If you're looking for something, it, it, at some point though, I was just like, okay, um, I'm ready to be done. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a long one. Yeah. And um, yeah. And then right here, you got, you know, you slip the ends so that way, but still, it feels a little tight, but it's not too bad, actually. Mm -hmm. It blocks out pretty good. Fingering? All fingering weights, I think. I know this is Madeline, this gray. Mm -hmm. I else? think that mustardy color has got to be Miss Bad. And I think even this color is Miss Bad. And then the cream, I'm not sure. <laughs> but that's amazing. Um, yeah, it's nice. I like it. I like the colors. I yes. mean, most people in the test group did like um, bright colors. So mine kind of look boring compared to no, everybody this else's. Is more than this. <laughs> you can gravitate towards and yeah. you can wear it. But um, but this one is more colors I know like you will wear. You wear? Yeah, yeah. But I do. I really love this um, this bit of color. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> the mustardy color that I accent. Yeah. And it's also intertwined here in the some slip stitches right there. And then I added it here as well. I'm I, I'm glad I did that. It wasn't part of part of the pattern, but I just did it. It has a nice little pop. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Very nice. So that's I Anna. Not much to say. I mean, it's a shawl. Um, yeah, I was like, again, I say this all the time. We don't need another shawl. But shawls are just so easy to knit and mindless that you're like, oh, but here I go casting on another. Here I go casting on another. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm looking at all my shawls. I'm like, oh man, I probably should sell some of these. There's I know. so many. No, I keep saying I don't want to make another. And I think Stacy sent me something the other day. Was it by Hoji? And uh, so he's like, I need another shawl. I know. But it's like, here I am looking at what I can do. Because it's the easiest thing to do with all those single skeins. It's like, that's what I'm trying to think of like a blank. Something, but then, but then you want to knit. I want to knit. I don't want to stop because yeah. I have too much clothes. Yeah. And that's why my girls bamboozle me and say, 
Well, you know you owe us some sweaters, and you have enough for yourself, so you should make us sweaters well, now. Well, hey, that's good. You have them to the next one. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I make them sweaters now. So yeah. So that's it. That's all I have to say about Ayana. Um, very pretty. It's a standard. Sure. But it's pretty cool. You know, turn that up. You have another echo? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, what's that right there? This is not a list. Do you hear that? <laughs> she showed that on Instagram. I was like, oh my God, that is way too adorable. You guys. So um, I did the, um, the knit, knit along with um, twin stitch knits, uh, twin stitches knit designs. And uh, she did the, um, she had a um, combo package of four different patterns, I believe. And uh, she had me at uh, some camp, Cozy Campus Socks and Plant Lady. Hello, that's my thing, right? That's my oh, jam. Tra I water Tracy plants, let me tell you. My husband was like, oh, you were there for a long time. I'm like, how long does it take her to water her plants? Forever. But then I it's have, a lot. Of it's plants. a lot of plants, and the thing is, some of these are cuttings <laughs> that I stole from you, and um, my daughter's plants as well. So it takes forever. But my oldest, she takes care of her own plants, yeah. and my youngest, I'm trying to train her to take care of her plants. Yeah. But yeah, it takes forever. But uh, that's why I say I'm not buying anything. We yeah, as we like see a new plant, you're like, oh, it's okay, so and then you're because I'm Publix, which is the grocery store here. They had a, a monstera, but philodendron, but it was the variegated color one, and it looked like it needed some, it needs Work. some TLC. Yeah. But I was tempted, but then I was like, no, I'm not adding another. That's nowhere for it. I have yeah, I, I struggle with lighting in my house because everywhere that a good light area, there's a vent there. Yeah, like hey, yeah. But anyway, um, I love plants. And uh, I can't buy any more, so um, I'm working on keeping the ones I have alive and keeping those happy. But anyway, so when she said plants, when she said the, the, one of the socks is plant lady, I went and automatically bought it. So I uh, went stash diving and found it's good. She, yeah, she um, put together the colors really nicely. Yeah, I went stash diving, and uh, the yarn is all finger weight, obviously. And um, I cast it on a size one, which is 64 stitches, which I don't normally cast on that amount. And I'll explain in a minute why. Because she did 64 and I think 72, I believe. Uh, because she said color work, um, the attention is kind of tight in the color work. And she said if you do a 56 cast on, it'll be too tight. And she wants you to be able to get the sock on your foot. Right. Um, I wanted to do it because I like the cute plants on there, but at the same time, uh, I need to work on color work because I suck at it. <laughs> I do. My tension is all over the place, and I pull, and I don't think I'm pulling, and it's like I'm trying to, it, it's fiddly, right, with DPN, in my opinion. Um, so I knit a size one, and um, I the only modification I made was I did the sock paration shadow wrap heel. I did not do the German short wrap. Sucks for the shadow wrap heel by Denise. Denise sent the sample. And then. The Earth Tones girl, right? Correct. And then uh, after I got to the heel, once I got through the color work, which I think went pretty fast. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Mm -hmm. But that went pretty fast. And then. Um, I decreased, once I got past the heel, I started to decrease. She said, this is the point where if you want to decrease the stitches to fit size um, 56 stitches, now you can decrease it. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I decreased it right along this color line right here, and then I'll, I'll knit to the end. Mm -hmm. um, she said, you can play with the colors, what you want down there on, in the striping. So that's those are the two colors I went with. And... Uh, yeah, it was a fun to knit. I need a lot more work on the work on color work. I need a lot of practice. It's pretty. So I like it. Yeah. It's cute. I I have not weaved all the ends, tons. And she said that there's different techniques you can use. I think Stephen West had one. She recommended using his technique to weave in as you go. Yeah. But that was hard. It was the color work with the strands. Yeah. So. I mean, both 
Yeah. Not bad. Need some work, but I'm getting there. But anyway, uh, very e fun knit, easy if you're into color work. Um, if you're not scared of color work, you want practice, introduction. Socks is the best thing or hat, I think. So, uh, no, socks just depends on your tension. Because my tension was off. But I still love it. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> Pretty. Yeah. Should I put it, get put it on, put it on a sock block first? Yes, yeah, so to see it better. And the heat and the toe, I just did a regular um, decrease to uh, 10 stitches and then I did a kitchen list to, to bind off. Mm -hmm. I, that's my standard go-to for all my toes. I don't like the pointy toe, but I don't like the super square toe either. Mm -hmm. so I think yeah, that satisfies both. I'm itching to put work, cast on socks, but every time like the shawls, I'm like, do I need more socks? Exactly, <laughs> I right? So many. I have so many, but I was, you know, couldn't help it. <laughs> and I'll shave the other one shortly. I'm still working on it. That's what I have for finished finished object. Object. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, move into works in progress. Works in progress. What you have? Um. So I am doing a test knit for Amy Sure, there's a top nice. that you would see and. It calls for, um, she calls for fingering, it's a v-neck sweater. Mm -hmm. You might have seen it, mm -hmm. but it calls for fingering and mohair, but because I'm not going to do mohair. Yeah. So I, I picked this yarn that I've had in my stash, but it's not really stash yarn. It's really slated for another project, which is the Anne's Puffed Sleeves Also oh, yes. by Amy Sher. And it's the Pearl Soho Knitting Yarn. It's a DK oh. Um But I knitted the swatch and the I need to go down in needle size because right now I'm getting 20 stitches and I need to get 21 mm. stitches. And already it's dense. Mm. So I'm not gonna do that because then it'll be denser. <laughs> I I'm, feel it. It's I'm dense. dealing with something similar right now. Yeah. That is dense. So, I only bring it up to show that, which Tracy, you made gauge with this yarn for Anne's Puff Sleeves. No, I didn't use that yarn. You didn't use this yarn? I used, um, oh, okay, I thought she did. I used, uh, but I have to go back to the drawing board. I used board. Good Wool. Good, oh, Good Wool. Yeah, yeah. So now I have to go back to the drawing board and look for, in my stash, for yarn that will be more suitable mm. for that. So that's the downer. And while I'm looking at Amy's, looking at the slack with the test group, some people jumped on and they have cast it on and like really made progress in the one week. I'm like, how oh do people gosh. move that? fast oh, oh my gosh. gosh you guys are giving me jealous yeah i'm just like wow that's amazing but i'm i'm, I'm a slow knitter so yeah i'm slower and then with the gate yeah anyway i have to go back to the drawing board with this one i mean you know just figure it out so i'm then i knit, i started the thea top um for my daughter i'm using quince and cold mm -hmm. because it calls for i think i believe mm -hmm. And my fabric is too dense and too big. It came out yeah. too big. And I met Gage with the size needle, like with size six needle. Mm -hmm. I met Gage, which shocked me because I never met Gage. And I'm knitting it, and I got it's a top down yeah. sleeveless top. Yeah. And I think I got like halfway right here, mm -hmm. and it's just too big for my daughter. Way Ooh. too big. And even though you met Gage, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's my tension is off. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened, so it's on hold for now until I figure out what to do with it. I might not do it and just make myself a sweater instead. Yeah. But I don't, I'm going to need more yarn, obviously. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's when I knitted this swatch, it didn't look so dense. So yeah. I don't know where I went wrong. Yeah. 
And yeah. I'm just like, no, this is not the yarn for that. Project. Correct. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And I had gotten it from a yarn shop and she recommended that yarn. And I'm like, oh, okay, no problem. I think I needed something lighter. Yeah. 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 Because I think if you do fingering on mohair, which is, I'm sorry, yeah, which is lace, right? It's a lighter, mm -hmm. but not as heavy okay. fabric. Okay. It's like lighter, right? Because yeah. of the fluff. Yes. Yes. So it's not going to be heavy as a deep. Maybe a sport weight? Maybe I should try a sport weight. weight and see if that works. Yeah. No, why not? Short sleeves? Okay. It is long sleeves. Oh, because you want it heavy? Because no, I mean, that's that. That's pretty dense. That's pretty dense. I'm like, well, I made my daughter's sweater, and it was pretty dense. I, I showed, I showed it here, and she loves that thing. She yeah. actually, she actually used to take it up, take it off the hangers for her while yeah. we were gone. Yeah, and uh, that thing is dense. Not as dense as this. You think it's more dense than that? No, this is dense. So. No. Then you yeah, think yeah, this yeah. Is more dense. That's yeah. heavy. Like that's serious. That almost feels worsted to me. Feels heavy. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's a DK weight fabric, right? I mean yarn. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. So I would think I might look see. Yeah. When I go home, I have to go see what. Yeah. And get moving because. Yeah, people are moving fast. People are moving fast, even though we have ten weeks. I'm like, oh, it's Leo. I feel like I'm at the starting line still. Yeah. <laughs> that's so bad. That's funny. Anyway. I am working on um, camisole number eight by my favorite things, my oldest daughter. And um, oh, that's a pretty color. Isn't that cute? Oh, that's um, this is a sleeveless top. Um, this is so her, right? And I she didn't want it super short, but she didn't want it super long. So I think this will work on her body because she's so tall. Um, so this is like I said, camisole number eight. Is it the top down thing? Uh, it's the top down. Oh, okay. I like the cables. Isn't the cables it's nice? Yeah. And I, I'm not a big cable person, but I I love this top. It looks so cute, and I can see her wearing this because she can wear anything. Yeah. She has the body to wear anything. And the yarn is knit for olive cotton merino, and the color is called coral, and it feels nice. It's a finger and weight, and it feels nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm making a size small. And I'm using needle size four for the body and then size three for the ribbon, even though the pattern, because I always have to go up in needle size because I'm a tight knitter. So the pattern calls for a size um, three for the body and a size two for the ribbon. And um, again, I'm in a size small. And uh, this is worked top down uh, with the cable pattern, as you can see. So first you work the left sh front shoulder and um then you work uh the right front shoulder and then you join those together and then you knit for a couple of inches not much and then you pick up the back left shoulder knit that down put that on hold pick up the right back shoulder knit that down put it on mm -hmm. hold and join them together mm -hmm. and then you uh join you Keep knitting back and forth, right, separately until you get to the armholes, and then you join in the round, and then you start knitting down. Does that make sense? So there's a lot of putting stuff on hold. Yeah. But I like the top down because I could have a try on as I go yeah. versus the bottom up. I struggle with that one. Yeah. So, um, and then once you're done with the body, it's a one by one ribbon on the bottom. She suggested um. Um, the Italian bind off method, mm -hmm. which I started to do it, but I felt like my stitches were going skirting out. It looked weird, mm -hmm. so I just did a bind off in pattern, and uh, she was able to try it on with no problem. It's not too tight, right? Yeah. So, um, I think so. Now I'm working on the neckline, and after that, I'll work the armholes, and then I'll be done. I was hoping to be done with this podcast, but that was a no go. Well, the whole knit pearl thing, ribbing, I'm slow at. I like yes. It. I'm very slow. I don't like it. I'm not a big fan of it, yeah. but it's absolutely necessary when you're working on it. It looks sweater. good, though. The end part is really nice. It's good finishing, but yes. 
Yes. It takes a while. It takes a long while uh, because I finished the body on um, a couple days ago. And uh, I'm working on, the, I'm still working on the neck. Well, I've been working on the bottom ribbon. I think that's where a lot of my time went. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm slow at it. Yeah. So that's what I'm almost finished with. So summer tops. I love working on them. I just don't like to wear them, but you know, no sleeves. Hello. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> so. Makes it easier. Yeah. That's what I have. So what else you have? I'm working on the heirloom quilt cardigan and mm -hmm. it was supposed to be for so our local yarn shop, Hearts on Fiber, is having a contest with their stubbies. It's called Stubby Fest. And everybody you have to buy the kit from her and oh, then yes. you submit your project to be um, judged by you know the community of knitters or you know um, just in the fiber arts community and so and you can do it too if you can go on um, when she opens it up uh, you could go on and you can vote Unfortunately, I'm not going to make that deadline. No. Matter of fact, the deadline was the 11th. And she told me, oh, you can still submit it by the 15th or so, or the 16th, because that's when her daughter's going to take the pictures. <laughs> and I Aww. think the contest is going to go up this weekend. Um, I'm not going to make it, because this project, I think I would like the end result, and I did like some making some of it, but I think the part where you got a mattress stitch mm -hmm. all the pieces is mm -hmm. where it's very daunting and i'm like i had to put it down for a few days uh because i and then i just told myself you're not going to make the deadline you're not going to have the submission because she's the um kim at hearts on fiber says oh you can submit the incomplete project and i'm like well i cannot really in this case because Patches. It's patches. <laughs> so I just told myself a couple days ago, I'm not gonna make it. There's no way. Because I'm just having to So even if you lay out the patches to show because all that's what you have to do is just mattress stitch everything together, right? Yeah, you, it sounds very easy to no, 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 no. I'm saying just lay yeah. it all out so you yeah. can get, get, get an idea so, of what it will look like. So, well, yeah, so no, that I have. That's fine, the layout, because Tracy gave me her opinion on the layout right. and it's fine. Um, so I have that down, and I took pictures. So I don't care. Uh, mattress stitching. Okay, Ugh, so that takes forever. It's the worst part. <clears throat> I had to go and look up. I had to do research to find a video to see how to mattress stitch both vertically mm. and then. Horizontally, right? Where you now have to, and each square has a salvage edge, mm -hmm. so it has a. And I'll I'll show I'll insert a video. Um, it's a salvage edge, and the points <clears throat> of the stars got to meet up. So, vertically, it's easy, very easy. And I put links to the video in my Ravelry, in case anybody want to know. Uh, so the stars match up decently vertically, but then when I try to add the piece on top of it, it's very hard to see with my eyes, <laughs> even though I have on glasses. I had to go outside in the heat wow. to see some of this stuff because wow. it's hard to see. Right. Because you have to make sure when you pick um, mattress stitching, you're picking up the right one, yeah, along the right line so that this peaks of the stars match meet <laughs> so i had to rip out and redo rip out and redo the one i was working on and i have i was like i give up because i was just starting to get you know how you start to get seasick yeah like your head just starts to feel funny i'm yeah. just like you know you know i'll do this on a day when i'm very happy no so i think what i'm going to have to do is undo the vertical connection right the mattress stitch vertically undo that and then um just try to seam it uh, i shouldn't say vertically because i guess you could turn these squares any way you want 
But you see how there's a salvage edge here. And then right up here, oh, wrong color. I should show you on a brighter color so you can see it. So the salvage edge here, if this is on this side and also on this side, right? You can't see it because it's mattress stitch. Then on the top is just, you know, normal thing, but no salvage edge. But you have to make sure that when you're doing it, it lines up with the other piece you're trying to connect, nice. if that makes sense. And the points have to match up yeah. just like this. So I'm thinking of undoing these, doing the hurry, this horizontal bit first, right? <laughs> Instead of connecting this piece to this piece first, I'll connect the bottom piece for this square first. And then when I get all the bottoms, you know, the four going down, it's hard to explain. When I get all of them in a line going down, then I will connect them like, you know. Does that make sense? I think so. I'm trying to follow along. <laughs> I'm trying to follow okay, along. Okay, so it's, t let me try again. Okay, so it's two rows, right? So, okay, so this will be the front, let's just say, right? So this is the front right side. And I have the four squares going down, right? And I need to mattress stitch it. But I I was mattress stitching first, these two going down like this, right? And instead of doing that, I'm going to undo this, mattress stitch the piece, pieces as going down vertically right. first, mm -hmm. and then, on this one and on this one, and then bring them together. Bring them together. Okay. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, for the in order for the points to match Mesh. up, because okay. if I try to do it this way with the two pieces, it's harder. Does that make sense? Yes. It's harder because now you're looking at. You got to make sure from here to this side you on the right row, right. which for my eyes, that's not working. And then the dark color, <laughs> you go in like cross-eyed. So <laughs> I think. To me, this doing it vertically is easier than doing it horizontally. So do the hard part first, then do the easier part. This sounds hard. I, that's why I put it down. I'm like, okay. But you know I'm what? Just not, it'll end up to be the most beautiful thing ever and you love it. You're like, oh, all that pain. So Andrea Marie today comes out with oh her Rhinebeck sweater. Matter of fact, it all it be as soon as I saw it. It reminded me of this sweater. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's gorgeous. gorgeous. But no. just thinking of that color work. Oh my but gosh. The, matter of fact, um, this heirloom party, I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, some people I saw in the project, my picture is black and white. I'll try to post a, a, a color pick a color thing here. Some people, instead of just having all everything meet up at the shoulder here and you seam it they actually have a color going down and around just one color easy themselves but shape shaping shape. because think about it this will no shaping yeah. it would just i don't know how that would hang right, right. i've been it thinking just about that like a curtain like yeah got it so i'm thinking of doing that but now now andrea Mari sweater because this is a cardigan. Her sweater, first of all, the color work reminds me of this. And I instantly had, I, I text Tracy, I'm like, I have PTSD just looking at this sweater. <laughs> I did too, because I'm like, Ooh. just number one. But also, the way she has, Andrea Mari has the piece of this, this um, the single color going along the shoulders here on both sides, almost like that sweater she has. The other is one that we all know. The weekender? Yeah, almost like that. Okay. You know how it has this. So anyway, um, so she did that on hers, on that sweater with the color work, which reminded me of this heirloom sweater, which people in the no, in the com and who knitted this project have done the same exact thing. Is oh my, my point. God. So, but instead, it's a cardigan versus a sweater. Severe PTSD from the whole experience. I'm just like shook. I know we talk about color work before, and we're, I'm not a big fan of it, 
But I figure for a cardigan, it would be okay. Yeah. <laughs> but man, what's her name, Lana? Hold on. Hmm. What's her name? Uh, another knit, another knitting pod. Oh yeah. She. I was watching a podcast about this sweater, this cardigan, and she said that she um, made the squares, and then her friend put it together for her. Oh, she has a great friend. I see why. I'm like, oh, my wonder why she didn't put it together. Now I see why. If I had somebody who can put this together, oh I'd be gosh. so happy. That's what I'm saying. She has a great friend. That would take off Be so much of the headache. Yes, because you don't mind making the squares. That's not even the problem. It's the e squares easy. is the fun part. It's just putting it together. And that's one of the reasons why, like, color work squares. So my daughters want me to crochet them with those color work tank tops. So Squares. I think crochet would be fine. Right. And I, squares. Yeah. I just don't want to put it together. I think that would even be better than this. Because mm -hmm. remember, it's the points that got them match. Yeah. Okay. But you make that makes sense there. So I did consider with the yarn to make Tana's fiber. She has a crochet. Yes. Um, oh. cardigan that's crochet in the panel. Granny squares. Granny squares hair. You know, in the back, and then the rest of it is knitted. Yeah. Um, that's a good idea. I, I should have done that. It's too late. I mean, I can't go back now. I mean, it, the yarn is all chopped up into these squares, unless I make a blanket. <laughs> That's an option. Believe you me, the idea crossed my mind. And it may happen that way. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a scarf. Ooh, a scarf might be a nice. But still, you still got a mattress stitch. But that would be easier than worrying about if it's going to hang right on the sleeves and have shape in. At least you could just. Match a stitch, what, three each row and call it a day? But then you're going to need to make more. You see, part of it, silly me, didn't realize because of the salvage edge, you got to like, <laughs> I thought you were connecting the salvage at the salvage edge. And when I was getting ready to connect it, I'm like, oh no, that is not what is happening here. <laughs> the salvage edge is not going to show. It's got to be like a smooth connection to the points. The points got to match up. So anyway, who knows how long that's going to be there. I'll finish it. She'll but finish it. I, I mean, and then there'll be the most favorite thing ever. She's going to be like, I love it. It's so much work, a labor of love. But I love it. Yeah. It so sorry, great. Kim and Tracy. Tracy's her sister at the yarn shop. Uh, not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, well, some of the picture of the layout say this is not going to happen. Not. I know. I was thinking of stopping over there tomorrow because since they I want to go to the place they have knit, they don't have knit night anymore, but knit, yeah, knit day, yeah, whatever. Yeah, they have, and they're having. Oh no, not that, not that day, not this. Day. No, it's the following weekend. They'll have the. Is it this weekend? They're having something with this whole stubby contest. They're having like a. We like gotta a go. Get to. We should go. I don't have anything to contribute, but I'm gonna go because I just wanna. You could vote. I think she's, you could vote. But she's, she's going to have it online. You can yeah. vote too if you are interested. She's moving from Wednesday nights to Saturday Oh, Monday. that's the group. Yeah. I went over there. Yeah, there's a quite a few people over there. Yeah. 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 Like branch out. I think that was one of my things I wanted to do for the last couple of years was to start a knit group, but I just don't know where, how. <laughs> yeah. It's like. I'd like to have more knit friends. I mean, you guys are great. Maybe we should do something on Zoom. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they have a craft, the uh, Charlotte Craft Guild. They have something. They meet up in, but it's in Charlotte. Yeah, I don't want to go that yeah. far. But um, I know there are knitters in our area. But I Kim, I, she has she has different events. You have another whip? I do. I have one more. I have. You guys, I have stuff that's sitting on hold for months now, and I need to finish it. But who can when they want to knit cute things that I like I'm to show you all? Especially when they keep coming up with new, new patterns. New patterns, right? So this is the cozy camper sock. That's the sock. Okay. You guys, you guys see the RV? Tell me that's not cute. Cute, cute, cute. And this is by again. This is part of the sock um, bundle that I bought from uh, Twin Stitches. That's so cute. Designs. I and, love the colors. Yeah. So uh, this is cozy camper, and um, 
part of it is that she gave six different designs that's related to Canton. And she said, you could choose all of them if you want to make a long sock, or you can choose two, three, whatever. I only chose two because uh, this camper sock kind of was enough for me. And coffee mugs. <laughs> I thought that was cute. So I chose the coffee mugs. Aww. They're so cute. They're cute coffee mugs. Oh, um, well, the camper and the mug. Yeah, we're going great together because, you know, when you go camping in the morning time, it's not great to have a cup of coffee or tea or oh, whatever. It's the best. It's the best. So Those she, colors are delightful. And they're cute. Yeah. So I, she had a difference. So this was a trailer camper, and then she had one that was a real camper camper, which I have a fifth wheel, so I chose the trailer instead. Um, and uh, she had one with... And uh, one with trees. I didn't go for those. That's why I went for the coffee mug and the and the uh, trailer. And then um, all of this is yarn from my stash, minus the white, which is hearts on fiber, little stubbies, and the color stone. I went and I got that purposely. Um, but everything else is from my stash. Yes. And um, this again is a size one, which is sixty four stitches cast on. And as I said before. She said she wants you to catch it on the larger size because color work can, tends to get tighter and she wants people to be able to put on the sock. So they were one of two sizes. So I chose a 64 stitches cast on. And once I got through the color work and I got down to the, um, I did the sock floration shadow wrap heel. And then once I got there, I started to do the decreases to 54 stitches and then I did the, the color striping. And, uh, did my regular toe, uh, regular decreases down to 10 stitches. Did the Kitchener stitch to bind off. Um, I haven't done any um, weaving in yet, but uh, not bad for color work. <laughs> not bad. Um, I did, um, when she said weaving the ends as you go, I did it for the foot. I feel like the bottom of my foot is a little wonky, the stitches, but that's okay. Um, it's not like I'm wearing this for the whole public to see. It's for camping. It's for camping, right? I think it's so cute. So I started the, um, so I, I'm on the other side and I just got done with the color work. So cute. now I got to add on the heel. So that's where I am. It is a You should make wonky. a scarf with it. Cute. With the camper and the coffee mug. You think like a um, you know, like it could be a straight rectangular scarf, right? Like a narrow one, that. and then just at the bottom of it, oh, just put a bunch of camper, like a camper on one side, the top, and the coffees on the top. No, sorry. Yeah, at the other end, put yeah. the coffee. Yeah, and then, the same. Yeah. yeah. So, it would be a lot easier to work the color work. Would it get caught in it? No, just make sure you catch your floats. Okay. Yeah, I try to catch my floats here, as you can see, like every. Three. I didn't do that, y'all. So. How yours is? Yeah, just catch it next time. So because you don't want your toes to exactly that was my concern. so like every two you right. just hold the the yarn. I hold one yarn and one the one I'm catching. Yeah, and this hand. This tutorial, don't worry. And yeah. then um, I work in yarn on this, and I just yeah. Okay. I just catch it. That's what every, I should have done. I every didn't think two, to do it. Yeah. I didn't think to do that at all. I need to. But uh, yeah, so next time, we'll learn. Yes, but I love it. It turned out so cute. It's nice and squishy. Oh yeah. my God. Love it, love it, love it. That, but this is what sold me on the pattern, that and the plants. There are other patterns in there, but I've yet to look at them <laughs> because it was all about the camper. The camper, yes. so cute. I showed it to my husband and he was like, cool, mom. I'm like, come on. Oh God, he's dry as a biscuit. <laughs> oh, like, Dude, you love camping. That's when I try to talk design with my husband. He gives me a blank stare like, why? Oh, he's such a bore. Oh my God. Except my neighbor, her husband, you talk to him about design and he has the right reaction. Does he? Oh well, yeah. Say? He's, he's like, yes. Fun. No, no. He's genuine. He's like, yes, that'd be so good. And then you do this and that. I'm like, yes. I'm like this guy oh, is great. Why can't, yeah. why can't other uh, guys be like that? Mm, mm, <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. All right. That's all I have for works in progress. 
Well, my last whip is by Amy Schur, mm -hmm. the Oolong Tank. Ooh. And I, well, I've been trying, I haven't made progress because I'm so busy trying to figure out, finish um, that heirloom quilt mm. that I didn't give it the attention it deserves. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking for the ball band. I'll have to flash it here, guys. I think I might have showed you guys this one though before. Mm -hmm. It's from Hearts on Fiber. And um, it's a bottom up construction. Mm -hmm. And with a lace motif, you could barely see anything, but it has a lace motif in the front. So I plan to check my gauge just to make sure. I did a gauge swatch, but I just want to, you know how gauge swatches can lie sometimes. Yes. So I just want to make sure I'm on the right track, you know, that this is not going to turn out too big yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. So I'm going to double check it before I get too far in. Um, but it's pretty simple. I mean, bottom up and stockinette, this simple, beautiful lace motif in the front. All right. And this yarn, oh man, I feel like I can wear it now, actually. Really? I feel it. That is nice. And I'll flash the content. Stop. I'll flash the content of the yarn here. Uh, this, I think it's yak. It's That's yak amazing. and silk. No. Yeah, if I'm wrong, I'll flash it here. And uh, I love the color. Yeah. It's so such a neutral earth tone. That's a Stacey and Tracy color. <laughs> Love it. Um, so you knit. I'll knit this. I'll probably go twelve, probably twelve inches, mm -hmm. twelve and a half inches before I do the, um, the, the separation for the arms, and then uh, yeah. And I believe you just. It's a V neck. So here's the long time. You've probably seen it a hundred times. Anyway, that's how cute. Yeah. Um, it's a v-neck and um, trying to think of anything else. Yeah, I'm making the size B, which is a 34.25 inch uh, finished bust circumference and size 4 needles. I, I think I went down to size 3 mm -hmm. because um, this yarn is a little slippery because of the silk content. Mm -hmm. So... I just, and I'm a loose knitter, so that's why I'm using the Lakers. I like, this is my favorite needle to use. Mm -hmm. And because of the slippery factor, I'm just making sure, like, you know, it's not flying all, you know, the. Oh, it's so cute. Why don't you make it for my daughter? Too loose. I love it. I love the Adriata too by Hohi, and I have that to cast on next after I finish this. <laughs> this is long. But this is the oolong, and yeah. Let's see, what else can I say about it? And, and the yarn she used, she says, look for the yarn that um, has drapey mm -hmm. qualities, such as an alpaca blend with a touch of a summer fiber, such as silk, cotton, or linen. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use linen quilt, she suggests. Too. Oh, wow. Yeah. She said, be cautious when selecting silk, cotton, or linen only fibers as they'll create less stretch and wearing. <laughs> so yeah, you knit from the bottom up. Armhole shaping work the same time as V-neck shaping on the front, while on the back, the neck shaping is worked the same time as the sh shoulder short row shaping. So see, I think a lot of summer tops, a lot of um, sleeveless tops are worked from the bottom up. Huh? Very few work top down. Yeah. And she has options for bust darts. So that's the one thing about Amy. Amy Shaw writes a very thorough pattern. Mm -hmm. so, um, so if you need bust darts, you know, um, she, she gives you instructions on lengthening, shortening. Mm -hmm. um, it's well worth, you know, mm -hmm. the work she puts into it. The, the, Price and everything of the pattern is well worth it because it's it's a lot of detail in there. I mean, so much detail like choosing the right cup size, choosing the right you know, it's just so yes, much. Yeah, so much detail, so like much, yeah. information, which is helpful, right? So mm -hmm. it minimizes people having to reach out to ask all these questions. So. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. There's nothing really I can say else about it. Yeah, I can't wait to wear it. 
I it's hope very it fits. Nice. I hope I hope my gauge is. Oh, see, that's the thing. With knitting. My gauge is always on point, and sometimes it's a win, and sometimes it's a dud. Yeah. And that's all I have. That's all I have too. We'll try to come again, especially when we do have an echo. Cause you know, maybe we'll focus the podcast more towards echoes and just diving in a little deeper with descriptions and stuff, just so we can get. Um, but yeah, um, I don't have anything else. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Um, next time we'll try to do an intro, another intro video. Um, talking about who we are. I don't know. Let me know if that's something you guys want to see again. I think we've done it a couple times. Yeah, we have. But for me, I don't know. What I else? don't know if people want like that or not. Yeah. What else would you like us to cover? Uh, give us suggestions. See, because I mean, I'm covering things I like to see. But if you would like to see something else, let us know. We always we're always welcome to feedback. We welcome the chatter down below. Yeah. But so until next time. Until next time. Bye.